Ladies and gentlemen, you are most welcome for this lecture of today. I'm going to keep it as short as possible, and I have chosen for you some of the most important ECGs that are very much liable to come in your exams. This is our famous leads, the AVR, the AVL, the AVF, and lead 1, 2, 3, and then the chest leads from V1 to V6. The important ECGs that come up frequently in the MRCP exams include myocardial infarctions with all its types and distributions, the life-threatening arrhythmias like ventricular tachycardia, ventricular fibrillation, dorsat du poids, and then the supraventricular tachycardias, including all the re-entrant tachycardias, the atrial fibrillation and atrial flutter, some of the ECG syndromes, which are very famous for the MRCP, and low voltage ECG that is usually displaying some features of disease like hypothyroidism, hypothermia, cardiac tamponade, pericardial effusions, and so forth. So in this one, I'm going to discuss myocardial infarction, and then the up next would be life-threatening arrhythmias and so forth. So here is our topic. First of all, this is a normal strip it's just showing the P wave, the QRS complex, the normal ST segment coming exactly on the isoelectric line, and then the T wave, and then the other complex. So whenever you are looking for any arrhythmias, you have to check the P wave's presence. If the P wave is preceding the QRS complex and all the QRS complexes are succeeding the P waves, then you are dealing with sinus rhythm and this is very important to note. The other thing is the rate, which is usually the big cubicle stands for like 300, then if it's only the RR distance is one big cubicle, it would be 300 rate per minute. And if it's two, then it's going by two, 300 by two, it would be 150. And if three, it's going to be 100. And if four, it's going to be 75. And if five, it's going to be 60, which is the, if less than 60, then it would be bradycardia. So for example, this rhythm strip is showing P wave, which is succeeded by QRS complexes, and the other QRS complex is also preceded by P wave. And so this is sinus rhythm. The rate is, there are some like one, two, three, four, four, so it would be 75 per minute. This, that's all that we can tell from this small strip. So what about myocardial infarction? 55 years old, with poorly controlled type 1 diabetes for a long time, two, two and a half decades duration, presented with chest pain, with retrosternal discomfort, her vitals were stable, on examination, nothing remarkable. The ECG is shown in this, on this slide. If you look carefully, there's P waves preceding all the QRS complexes, so this patient is in sinus rhythm, and the QRS complexes are also succeeding the P wave. So there is what's abnormal here is that there is ST segment elevation with upward concavity, and this is important to note because if it's upward convexity, then this would be indicating pericarditis. But uh, characteristically, myocardial infarction follows the arterial distribution, unlike the pericarditis, which would be generalized in most of the leads, if not all the leads. So in this patient, there's ST segment elevation in lead 2, 3, and AVF. A, V, F, and those are characteristic of inferior myocardial infarction. So when the question comes up this way, is it the inferior myocardial infarction, anterior, posterior, right ventricular infarction, or none of the above, the right answer is A, which is inferior myocardial infarction, because I have just mentioned the ST segment elevation is in lead 2, 3, and AVF. So to continue this scenario, the former patient's blood pressure dropped suddenly to 90 over 50. The ECG was repeated and it's showing this one. I'm sorry this is not the ECG for the same patient, but just, you know, I found that this ECG is displaying what I'm looking after. So if you look carefully here, you would find T, ST elevation, in lead V3 and V4 mostly. So this is indicating 
right ventricular infarction. And this is very much found in patients with inferior myocardial infarction. If they drop their blood pressure, you have to suspect and look for the right ventricular leads, looking for right ventricular infarction. And those patients, their hypotension is treated with normal saline. You just fill up the circulation with normal saline and their blood pressure would get up. So hypotension might be the hallmark of right ventricular infarction, and usually such patients are resuscitated with large amounts of IV fluids, particularly, and best of them all is normal saline. So on this ECG, what can you see? Also, there's P wave, sinus rhythm. The rate is around 75, probably. And there is ST segment depressions with tall R wave in V1 and V2. V1 and V2, characteristically, they don't have tall R waves. This is one of the differentials of a tall R wave in lead V1 with ST segment depressions. So this is characteristic of posterior myocardial infarction. And there are many other causes of tall R wave in V1, like right bundle branch block, WPW syndrome, that's why Parkinson white syndrome, type A, and some others that we'll be discussing later on with the syndromes. With this, we come up to the end of this mini lecture. The up to come are the other types of arrhythmias. Thank you so much and see you in my next video.